Hey guys, it's Chris from Highline Guitars, and you're watching episode 114 of From the Luthier's Workbench. And in this episode, I'm going to be providing you an update with the children's guitar that I'm building and the never-ending cow skull guitar project. So let me bring you in a little bit closer and we'll get started. So this is the kid's guitar that I've been working on. And I've never actually made a kid's guitar before. So I had to do a little bit of research uh, before I actually began building it. And one of the things that I discovered is that a lot of times these guitars are marketed as three-quarter size. And they generally will have a shorter scale than what is typical, like, you know, Typical being 24 and three quarter or 25 and a half. These are usually a little bit shorter and it can be anywhere from 21 and a half all the way out to say around 22 and three quarters. But in truth, if you were to take like a Stratocaster and shrink it down 25%, so that's three quarters of its original size, none of those dimensions actually work. So I had to do a little bit of um, research and some decision making and what I ended up with was I, I went with a scale length of 22 and a half inches and 22 frets so everything seems to fit pretty nicely and then for the body I took this is one of my new uh, body designs uh, it's called the echo a double cutaway design and what I did was I kind of shrunk it down about 85 percent which I felt like was the right size for this guitar and I went with a thinner uh, body thickness instead of one and three quarters which is what I usually do I brought it down to one and a half which I think is a little more um, um, it seems to make sense um, in terms of bringing all the sizes down uh, to keep it a one and three quarter looked odd so um, I just took the blank and planed it down to one and a half inches and that's what I went with and it has a nice little comfort contour here and on the back it has a little belly relief even though this is going to be for uh, an eight-year-old or a nine-year-old I'm not sure which um, doesn't really have a belly so but I went ahead and did it just to make it as comfortable as possible. The body is made out of alder and it is very, very lightweight. I went with one pickup and a volume and a tone. No switch, no second pickup, and it's keeping it pretty simple. Now the bridge that I went with is a Rickenbacker six string hardtail, um, sort of like the, their version of a Tunematic. And the reason I went with that, I kind of explained that in my quick tips, uh, which I posted earlier this week. And the, what I talked about was how you can uh, make some careful choices with regard to selecting a bridge that will allow you to actually reduce the width of the neck. Because I wanted to try to move the strings closer together, then make the neck a little bit thinner, and then that way it would be an easy neck for a small child or even an adult for that matter with short fingers to play. And so what I did was I chose the Rickenbacker six string uh, bridge because it has a string spread from E, from the high E to the low E of one and seven eighths inches. So, you know, when you compare that to a bridge like a typical uh, Stratocaster either the hardtail or the tremolo, those bridges have two and one eighth inch string spread. So this is a quarter of an inch less. So I was able to make the heel and the overall neck um, narrower than if I had used a you know, standard, you know, Stratocaster type uh, hardtail or even a tunematic for that matter. Uh, the only way you can use a tunematic and reduce the string spread is to make sure that you purchase a, a tunematic bridge that has unnotched saddles and then you can notch it yourself and uh, adjust that string spread. The only disadvantage with using this bridge is the bridge sits really high off the body of the guitar. It's about six tenths of an inch off the body in its lowest position. Now that compares to a 
uh, like a, a Fender hardtail, you know, or like the hip shot six string hardtail, those bridges, when the saddles are in their lowest position, are about three tenths of an inch off the top of the body. So the height is half that of this bridge. As a result, with those kind of bridges, you can keep the, the neck nice and level and have no problem achieving proper string action. But with a neck, with a bridge like this, because it sits so high, you have to actually lower the nut down, and you do that by angling the neck to bring the strings closer to the frets so that you have usable string action. Well, I wanted to keep the neck level. I didn't really want to uh, fuss with angling the neck. So what I did instead is I routed out this rectangular shape here, which is where the, uh, the bridge plate, the mounting plate will go. And that will re lower the, the bridge down into the body. And this plate sits down about 3 16 of an inch below the top surface. So this will allow me to keep the neck level and achieve the kind of string action that I want without having to, um, you know, deal with um, strings that are too high up, even when the bridge is in its lowest position. So that's uh, pretty simple. And where I'm at as far as assembly is concerned is, as you can see, the body and the neck are done. And what I did, this, but the body is is alder, so I sealed the top surface with z epoxy uh, finishing resin. This stuff works great as a, as a grain filler and what I would call a surface smoother. And I really like to use this stuff. It's so easy and a tiny bit goes a long way. I put two coats on here and I just applied it. I put on my nitro gloves and just uh, smeared it around after I had mixed the two, two parts up and then just smeared it around. You have a long working time and it will actually level out once you've got it spread out. And I did that, you know, all the way around. I did, I did one coat, let it dry overnight, then lightly sanded it with some uh, 220 grit sandpaper and then applied a second coat. And what this does is it not only fills any imperfections in the wood and, and fills grain, but it also hardens the surface. And that's, I think, important because as you know, alder is a softer wood and can dent and ding really easy. So now the next step is going to be to apply paint because this is going to be painted. And the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to use, um, this is uh, Createx um, airbrush paint. And I'm actually going to load this into my LVLP gun. This is a white sealer. And I'm going to apply a couple of coats of the white sealer so that the entire body will be white. Then I'm going to go back and spray pearl red. Um, over the whole body, front and back. In fact, it's going to go part way up the neck and it just will fade out. And then I'm going to mask it off and I'm going to spray pearl blue flames going back. And my hope is that I will have those uh, flames over the pickup rings as well as the pickup itself. So um, should be kind of a cool look. And then for the headstock, I'm going to paint the top. Uh, first I'll do the white sealer, then I'm going to put down um, the blue and then red flames over. So it'll be the opposite of the body. So it's going to be a pretty cool guitar for a kid. And when you consider that most kids' guitars are under a hundred bucks, um, this is going to be a step up. And I think that's really important that kids have an opportunity to play better quality instruments when they're starting out that are easier to play, that are set up correctly, that are tuned properly and intonated. Otherwise, they end up giving up on the instrument. And we need to encourage kids to play uh, guitars. So that's uh, pretty much where things stand on the children's guitar. Now let me jump into where things stand with the cow skull guitar. So this is the cow skull guitar, and you've seen it before. It's I've been talking about this one for a while. But uh, I had gotten to the point with this guitar where it was basically done. The only thing I had left to do was to put the final set of strings on. Now when I build a guitar, I always use two sets of strings. The first set is the setup strings, and I use that to set up the... Uh, the guitar, you know, as far as the bridge height, uh, intonation, pickup height, 
and then I check to make sure that all the frets are in good order. And then once I'm done with that, I'll replace those strings with the strings that I'm going to ship the guitar with. And I had this guitar pretty much done, and I was about to put those strings on, and I was looking at it, and I just, I just wasn't happy with the finish. Now, the finish that I was using, or that I had used, is my own hand-rubbed oil-based varnish. And it's basically just a mixture of oil-based polyurethane, uh, equal parts oil-based polyurethane, mineral spirits, and boiled linseed oil with a couple of drops of Japan dryer to speed up the dry time. And I'll apply that by, you know, building up layer after layer and until I have an adequate uh, finish with good surface protection. The problem is, you know, with, with an oil-based polyurethane and with boiled linseed oil, those two uh, products, even separate, are, they have a, a golden amber color, and you put the two together and it just it's just even stronger. So what ended up happening was this graphic of the cow skull, the inlaid cow skull, uh, which was my, uh, it, this was, in, uh, was engraved with my CNC machine, into the wood, it was carved in there, and then I packed it full of um, white polymer clay with pieces of, of turquoise polymer clay, and baked it, sanded it off, and that's how I came up with this graphic. But once I had put on all that varnish, this graphic was no longer, you know, a white color, it was yellow, and I just didn't like the way it looked. So. I made the decision as I was about to put those strings on and call it done to strip the entire guitar down, sand off all the finish, and start over. And I have decided to go with a completely different approach. And what I did was, after sanding it, I put down a water-based aniline dye. And aniline dye is my favorite kind of dye to use on wood because it just, it's so intense but it won't really mess with the color of my polymer clay inlay. It doesn't really soak into it, just soaks into the wood. So once I had that dye done, and it was kind of a red-brown color, I kind of did some sanding in a few spots to give the guitar sort of a, um, you know, that, that antiqued, um, vintage distressed, you know, fake relic look. But, you know, most guys, when they do a relic look on a guitar, they'll take their fi guitar that's completely finished with, that's clear coated and everything, and they'll just, they'll take a belt sander and grind off the, the finish wherever they want it to look worn. You know, they'll beat on it with chains or drag it behind a car or whatever. And what they're actually doing is they're, partially destroying that protective clear coat, and that exposes the raw wood, which is never something I like to do with a brand new guitar. So what I wanted to do was to create that distressed look, but to make sure I had a homogeneous clear coat protective coating. So after sanding off some of the dye, I put down my first uh, five coats of clear, and I'm just using a, a water-based polyurethane uh, it's a gloss polyurethane. And what I'm going to do is I've sprayed five coats, level sanded that with 220 grip, and now I'm in the process of spraying another five coats. And once that's done, I'll let it sit overnight, and then I'll level sand it with 400 grit. Then I'm going to spray some general finishes, water-based polyurethane flat finish. And they have a flat finish, a flat polyurethane that's the flattest that I've found out there. And all it takes is two to three coats, and you've got this gorgeous flat finish. And uh, you don't want to spray anything more, any more than you know, two or three coats, because if you do, the flattening agent that's in it will start to make your uh, surface of the of the guitar look kind of cloudy. So I just stick with you know two to three coats and call it good after that. Now once that's done, I'll be able to reassemble the guitar and put those final strings on it and then I'll be able to shoot some photos of it, put it up for sale on, on Reverb. So hopefully that's going to happen um, in the next week or so. It, it's going to take a little bit of time, probably a couple of days to get this, um, this new 
uh, clear coat finish sorted out. So um, stay tuned down the road for some photos of this guitar once it's finished. Well, that's all the time I've got for this episode of From the Luthier's Workbench, and hopefully you found something interesting. I know that sometimes these updates aren't as interesting as you know the how-to videos that I that I post occasionally. Um, speaking of which, when I post videos, if you want to be kept up to date on the latest videos that I put up, uh, I highly encourage you, of course, like everybody else does, to hit that subscribe button. And I think there's also a, an eye, a bell icon that you can click and you'll get notifications when I post videos. And don't worry, it's not like I'm posting three or four videos a day. I'm not doing anything like that. I do basically two videos a week, my quick tips video and my from the Luthier's workbench video. So, um, you know, and, and it may, it may start spreading those out to once every two weeks. I don't know what we'll just, you know, it just depends on how much time I have, but, um, I encourage you to, to subscribe, to be notified, stay up to date on everything that I'm, I'm putting up. And, you know, speaking of spamming, um, <laughs> anytime I mention products in my video that I use that I really like, I always try to put links in the description below so you can go out and check them out yourself. So, you know, if you're interested in the z or, um, you know, the general finishes polyurethane uh, that I mentioned, uh, check the, the description below and uh, if I've got links down there, you can go and take a look at it yourself and uh, maybe pick up a, a supply for yourself. So um, that's it for this week. And until next week, uh, I hope you have a great weekend, a great week ahead, and we will see you soon.